Hey everybody, welcome to another live stream lesson with me, Stu Fuchs and Ukulele Zen. Today we're going to be learning A Kiss to Build a Dream on. classic jazz ballad made famous by Louis Armstrong. How are you feeling today, folks? I am really excited to dive into this jazz lesson. This is such a charming song, perfect for any occasion, and it's not very hard to play. Let me know how you're doing in the chat, where you're coming from, where you're watching from, whether this is a live or replay for you. Please know you can watch this as many times as you like. We're going to be covering a lot of ground in this hour-long live stream lesson. I love offering these live stream lessons the first Sunday of every month. There is a free printable PDF of the song sheet we're going to be working with. And I'll also be, uh, at some point, after we jam the tune and sing it, I'm going to be playing through this solo, this three-page arrangement and uh, that is available at a link down below for patrons of Ukulele Zen who are at the diamond tier level. See, there are folks from all over the world here. Wow, Dana is here from Poland, Scotland. Tom McGuire is here from Scotland. Trey Romano is here. Hey, Trey. We got Ra Razvan is here from Romania. Wow, we got folks from Alberta, Lake Ontario. Uh, Leslie, glad you're here. Paris is in the house. Germany's in the house. I'm so glad that you decided to join me. Um, let's jump right into today's lesson. As we go through this, I'll of course be zooming in on my hand. I'm going to take you through a couple of really nice tasty options for an introduction. I uh, will of course, through the course of this lesson, be offering some practice tips, some variations so you can go deeper into your music. Let me know that the sound is good and that uh, everybody is uh, seeing and hearing me okay. Pete, glad you're here from Ithaca, my old stomping ground in central New York. Before we get started, I got to share some great news with you. Big thanks to you all. Look what YouTube sent me. It, yeah, I finally got it. <laughs> I'm so grateful to everyone who has... Uh, found enough value in what I do to reach out and click the subscribe button. I got my silver play button. So grateful to you all. Thank you so much. This belongs to you. And I am just so honored to be sharing what has helped me in my music journey over a lifetime of playing all different styles. I love sharing ukulele music with you kind, loving folks out there. So grateful for the community that has been built around the ukulele and this channel. So thanks so much. I'll eventually have a, a better backdrop and this will be, um, this will be uh, shown. <laughs> so thanks so much, everybody. That's the big news for me. And if you uh, are enjoying what you're seeing, please consider joining the community. There are links down below to join as a member of the Patreon community. You can support this channel, help it to grow. You get all kinds of perks with your membership, including uh, this really cool solo if you feel like uh, digging into some some chord solo material. Each and every month I offer a jazz tutorial with an in-depth video lesson. Let's get into things right now. Thanks so much for joining me. Now, let's just play a little bit of this song and then we're gonna backtrack and get into this intro, okay? If you haven't already, please check the links, download this printable PDF so you can follow along. And here we go. We'll skip the intro for right now. Let's just get it started with a nice jazz strum. I like using my thumb, but I also strum with my index and sometimes I use finger style. A nice basic strum to start with is this dragging the thumb through the strings lightly and then shutting off the sound on beats two and four. That makes a nice swing feel. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The whole time I'm doing this, my hand, my fretting hand is very, very loose and I'm just hanging out with listening to the sound of my jazz basic swing rhythm. Once you get this under your fingers, you can start 
adding other rhythms. We'll get into that through this lesson. Let's jam a little bit of this tune from the verse. Oh, give me a kiss to build a dream on, and my imagination will thrive upon that kiss. Sweetheart, I ask no more than this, a kiss to build a dream on. Oh, give me a kiss before you leave me, and my imagination will feed my hungry heart. Leave me one thing before we part, oh, a kiss to build a dream on. When I'm alone with my fancy, I'll be with you Weaving romances Making believe they're true Oh, give me your lips for just a moment And my imagination will make that moment live what you alone can give Oh, a kiss to build a dream on yeah. And that is just a simple, quick run-through of the basic structure. But don't click away if that was tricky for you. Of course, we're just jumping in. Let's break down each and every section, and then I'm gonna... I'll play the solo while you strum the chords. Let's get started but just by going through the structure of the verse. If you don't have your ukulele with you, please go get it. Make sure you're sitting in a comfortable seat with your feet on the floor. Always a good idea. Now I'm going to lose the slideshow for a minute because we're going to hang out with those intro chords later. But please follow along with me. Slow motion, nice and easy. Your first objective really is to keep this hand cool even playing a chord like C like you've probably played a gazillion times ask yourself how loose can my thumb be come on strum your C chord just give it some give it a stroke right here low G or high G just fine low G is a little nicer for jazz tunes it's got that low sound and you can get a few extra notes but as you strum, just reach out and loosen up that thumb. You know, when your thumb is loose, your wrist is loose, and vice versa. Our wrist is loose, our thumb is loose. Try to imagine that as, you, as we go through these chords, you want to have the elbow just hanging like a pendulum, okay? That's just, it's suspended from a line. Okay, like a tightrope wire between the shoulder and the hand and there's this pendulum hanging from it and it's the elbow. We don't want it sticking up like this that's using muscles so just try to let it cool out and this is a great practice uh, routine to frequently ask yourself how loose is my hand and if you feel tension creep in just pause and interrupt that habit. Let's go through the chords. The first change, C. Give me to B7. A kiss to build a dream on. Oh, yeah. So when we change it from here, yep, we have to lay the first finger across. Can you notice a difference? Let me know in the chat if it feels like all of a sudden you're squeezing a ton to get that bar chord to ring. If so, check out some of my videos on the channel which help you to relax the hand. Yeah. It will take some time, but you can approach the, the instrument with a very relaxed touch. The fingers will get stronger and more supple. So we do that two times in a row. Two, three, four. 
Give me a kiss to build a dream on And my imagination There we go to the next chord, G7. So what's that change from B7 to G7? You know, I'm not going slow to bore you. <laughs> I want you to get really curious like a detective. Which finger is common between this chord B7 and G7? Yeah, it's the middle finger. So try to use that pivot finger, that guide from one chord to the next. And everything relaxes and that just slides across the strings. Okay, the next chord is G diminished, so we slide this down, and we come back up, and we go back down. So, so far we have C, join in with me. Give me a kiss to build a dream on. Back to B7, and my imagined G7, slide it down. Will feed my hungry heart. Next, D minor. Darling, I ask no more than this. A kiss to build a dream on. Okay, so that is the whole first section, but wait. There's more. Don't click away. And remember, you can watch this as many times as you want. It says D minor to G7. You can make it a little more colorful by playing D minor 7. And D minor 7 is just using your D minor and dropping the pinky. And you get this note on top, which leads down there. Once again, get curious with which finger is common between here and here. This close-up of my hand, hopefully you find it helpful. And you get a good view of all the mosquito bites on my hand. <laughs> there are so many mosquitoes this year. Are there mosquitoes where you live? My goodness. It's been a wet, rainy summer up here in New England. So yeah, and then we go back to here. So that is like the process. You know, we can't spend the whole lesson like this, although I'd love to. I think it's very relaxing to do this. And it really does help you to memorize and get off the page when we go slow. But the idea is that I hope that you will approach your songs this way. Just getting really curious about two questions. How loose can my hand be and still be in control? And what are the guide fingers? What are the common fingers between chords? Now, there are more colorful ways to play these chords, and we're going to get into them. But before we do, let's check out the bridge chords, okay? Are you with me? Let me know in the chat if this is cool. If you're having a good time, please check the links down below if you don't already have this page, and check the other links down below as well. So, we're going to zoom in on my hand, and we're going to get into this bridge. We move to a chord the F minor 7. There are two ways to play this chord. One is with a bar across the first finger, <laughs> bar across the first fret, excuse me. Okay. When I'm alone, and that's nice because you can just lift these two up and move to your B flat 7. With my fancy. So rather than jump around from one change to the next, let's just hang out with this one progression. I'm going to show you another way to play this chord, but take a look at this first. Bar, and let's apply a principle I shared in a recent video where we first just lay the fingers across the strings and make a thud. It's just, it's just a percussive sound. It has hints of the chord but it's really just you training yourself to be so soft with this hand. Now, notice that my wrist is straight, right? It's not at an angle this way or this way, just straight as if I was picking up a suitcase, you know, just like that. Right? And get really curious. Breathe and smile at your hand. It does help. Okay? 
Now what the next step is to apply a little bit of pressure. And when you do this, rem remember to return to this rest position. So we're gonna put a little bit of pressure. And some of the notes will be clean and some of them won't be clean yet. And then relax. And as you do this, feel and look at your hand. And it's coming through, but it's a little sloppy. That's okay, because what we're doing is we're keeping a relaxed touch. By now, you may be noticing, hmm, this note is not coming through at all. And then you get curious. You ask yourself, why isn't it coming through? Maybe there's something in the position of this finger. Perhaps it needs to come down just a little bit this way to allow the knuckle to connect with the string. Your hand is yours, obviously, so you got to get really personal <laughs> with this and find which parts of your fingers work. I have a whole series of tutorials on the channel, Ukulele Zen, on how to make bar chords easier. You can just look up bar chords, Ukulele Zen, you'll find it. Okay, and then the next stage is you just squeeze a little more and you get the clean sound. But please remember to return to that relaxed position. Why? Because we want to always have that bass line, cool hand. And eventually, it'll just be something that you can reach out and grab. All right? That's how you play F minor 7 as a bar chord. It's a nice way to do it, because then you can go directly to the B flat 7 chord. And then the next chord, this finger stays in place for the G minor. All right, and this is, of course, the bridge right here. Let's play, try it together. When I'm alone with my fancies, I'm resting my hand often to give it a rest, but also to give the music a little bit of space in between each chord. And we're not squeezing the chords all the time. We're giving a little bit of punctuation, a little bit of silence in between. Now, for those of you who feel comfortable to do so, there's another way to play this chord. You may actually find this easier. Instead of barring, what you do is you use fingers one and two back here on the first fret and three and four here. Same process, right? You just thud, then buzz, and then squeeze a little more engaging this part of the finger. Yeah. And three to five minutes of mastering one chord like this is a great practice because you'll, first of all, master this chord, and second of all, you'll learn how to approach things in a way where you soften your way through it. Right? Instead, of, instead of muscling it from the beginning, you just soften into it. Like water wears down the rock. Okay, so that's another way to play. This is a movable shape. F minor 7 because the root is right there on the second string. Yep. If you moved it up to here, you would be playing a G minor 7. Common sounds in jazz music. Don't mean to go down too deep of a rabbit hole, but I thought it was important so you're not sitting there with a cramped hand and, uh, you know, hurting yourself. Let's try playing through the bridge all the way through. One, two, one, two. When I'm alone with my fancies, I'll be with you. D minor, weaving romances. Open. Making believe they're true. And then we're back here. Now, there's in a moment when we go through the chord intro, you're going to learn a lot of new ways to play these chords. Let me show you a cool way to play that G7, G7 sharp 5. You got G7, chord that we all know and love. Now just reach out and Get your pinky in there. And 
that's one way to play it. The other way would be to completely refinger it. Right, so it's really up to you. I sometimes just like to plop my finger right there. And from there, we just move on to repeat the last verse. Okay, it's very, very similar to what happened up here. Are you ready for the introduction? Come on, let's get it. I appreciate you joining me. If you're enjoying this video so far and you're getting some value out of it, do me a huge favor and please click the like button. Um, and if you haven't already, click the subscribe button so you can keep in the loop of every time I put up a new video. And uh, if you'd like to support this channel, remember that there are links down below to join the community. So grateful to everyone supporting this channel on Patreon. And thanks for joining me, whether it's live or, or as a replay. So psyched that you're here. Thanks for making music with me. I hope you and your families are doing well on this. Well, in America, it's a holiday weekend, the Labor Day weekend. So, um, all right, come on, let's get into this. Now, these two introductions, it's the same chords in two positions. And, you know, this is just the skeleton. What you do with this rhythmically and other, there are other embellishments. There's so many things you can do, but let's just get into the skeleton of it. When you play the introduction, you can play C with your pinky. And that allows you to pivot to the C diminished. Now watch, the pinky stays there while you pivot to your D minor seven. And then G seven. And we just talked about adding that pinky right there to play the last chord, G minor, G7 plus five. So let's just play a really basic, you know, just two strums each chord, and then we're gonna get a little more hip with it. But, you know, we gotta first understand how to play these chords in a way that feels soft, okay? So are you ready? I'm going strum, short strum. Let it ring, mute it. All right, that's a nice swing rhythm, two. Three, here we go. All right, we did two strums each chord. Don't click away. It's not supposed to be perfect the first time. These are practices. These are not perfections. Let's do it again. Two, two, two. And then when we get to these last ones, let's do one and one. All right, so it'll be two bars of time. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, four. Oh, one, two. All right. All right. How you feeling out there? Rest your hand, stretch it, breathe deep, very nice. Now, this is a tricky thing already. Yeah, it's not the world's most complicated jazz progression, but come on, we're learning a lot about how to keep one finger steady while the rest dances around it. Go through it slowly. Notice the choreography, the ballet. Here's the ballet. This one's going to stay put. Yeah. And get real curious with this. Nice. If you're ready to do so, try to do it just looking at your hand. Ready? Here we go. C. The next one. Guiding your fingers. Breathing deeply. Yep. And release. You know, I practice with a timer often. I put a timer on for just like three minutes. I'll just do one thing for three minutes. It's a great way to meditate with your instrument. You focus on just one thing at a time, go deep into one subject you will learn it more thoroughly and you'll learn more about learning, you know. So focusing in on it is the way to master this. Just one thing at a time. Now let's put a little more rhythm to it. Let's go like... I 
did that all with my thumb. You could use other fingers if you like. You could finger style. How you feeling so far? Are you ready for the next one? We're just getting started. Now, one last thing before we move on, the power of the silence. You remember how before, I, if you haven't clicked away, you, <laughs> you heard me say that we rest and we return to that rested position often. Well, this serves your music in a deep way because now, you see, that was much more punctuated than just going, I'm putting a little silence in it. And how do I get that silence? I squeeze, release. And you train yourself to feel the release more than the squeeze, okay? It's like you feel the relaxation more than the effort. All right, let's move on to the next one because this is where it's going to start getting even more interesting. We're going to play that C chord this time as a bar chord. You could play it as your good old C if you like, but... Playing the bar chord will be nice because you'll see the progression. You switch everything around. You could, of course, play this. That's great, too. Power to you. It's all good. Do it this way if you like. Or like this. By playing this, you have more notes available to add some embellishments. All right. And then the next one, D minor 7. This time playing it here as a bar at the 5th fret. And then the G7. And this time we're adding the sharp 5 by lift, lifting up that pinky. This, these, all, by the way, all this written material, these two progressions are available at the link down below, totally free, so enjoy them. Now we can mix and match, all right? We can mix and match these two. Take some of the chords from this progression, take some of the chords from this progression. Let me give you an example. See, I played the first progression, C. C diminished, but I slid up one, two, three frets to this voicing of the same chord. Okay, it's the magic chord. The diminished seventh chord slides up three frets. Am I boring you? I hope not. Just taking it slow. Okay, so you could mix and match some of those G7s. I do there? I took my G7, backed up to the diminished, and I hopped up here to put a timer on for three minutes. And then when the three minutes are up, ask yourself, you know, well, am I still focused? It's okay. If you lost concentration, that's what the mind does, but we're training it to just stay with one subject. All right. Now, why are we doing this? Why am I going into all this detail is so you can have a tasty introduction, all right? Now, the chord solo arrangement that's available at the link down below with a full tutorial, and each month you get, as a member at that tier, you get a full, you know, full-length tutorial. I, I wrote a much more uh, in-depth uh, one, which is exactly as recorded. <laughs> which is exactly what the piano player is playing on the original recording with Louis Armstrong. Um, but what we have here is the ability just to improvise our own. And when I say improvise, I mean, you know, you take this vocabulary now. And you make it your own. And 
you take these two progressions and mix and match them. All right. Is Thomas, Tommy Fessel in the house? Awesome. My son Rowan has a, uh, one of his action figures is called Switzerland. <laughs> and we have a Switzerland magnet and the cow that you gave us. Tommy, awesome. Check out Tommy Fessel. He's a wonderful man, wonderful ukulele teacher in, uh, in Switzerland. Glad you're here, brother man. Got to get back to Europe someday. All right, are you ready to jam some more? Why don't we try this together? Let me know in the, in the comments what questions you have. Okay, please preface your questions with a couple of question marks before and after so I see it pop out of the chat, okay? So what we're gonna do, start with that introduction. Sing it. Give me a kiss to build a dream on, and my imagination will thrive upon that kiss. Sweetheart, I ask no more than this a kiss to build a dream on. Give me a kiss before you leave me, and my imagination will feed my hungry heart. Leave me one thing before we part, a kiss to build a dream on. following along with the chords right here what I was playing was just an off-the-cuff uh, 
trying to keep it simple so you can follow along. Simple uh, chord melody arrangement. I want to share with you a couple of more chord tricks, but of course I want to answer any questions that are coming through in the chat. So please, if you have any questions about anything that we're doing, please let me know. Happy to review anything. Um, this song is not that hard to play when we take apart some of the chords, especially those tricky ones in the bridge that we spent some time on, like the F minor 7. <laughs> Please go over, oh, Parker's here. Hey, Parker. Uh, please go over the transition to E flat. Yes. Okay. So when we're transitioning to E flat, this is an interesting chord progression. Okay. The, the bridge is really moving to the key of E flat. Okay. We have the two chord. If we were going to analyze this, we have the two chord, F minor seven. <laughs> to the five chord, B flat, and then it's moving to E flat. But I'm playing the E flat down here because that's where the melody is. So I'll answer your question just to say. But what's happening is before we get to E flat, we're playing really a G minor shape and then moving up to E, e flat. Now here's where um, the range of the ukulele can make the names of chords a little bit tricky. In actuality, the G minor is really the same notes as an E flat major seven. All right, if I had a bass player, playing that note, you would hear that this is really not so much a G minor chord as it is an E flat major chord, E flat major seven. But naming it is not as important as the music. So what we're doing here is we're really transitioning from this to B flat to G minor. Now I just slide that finger up. And if you wanna play that in another way, you could play the F minor seven here to B flat seven to this E flat major seven. And I will slow that down and show you. So check it out. We have an F sharp minor, excuse me, F minor seven. The name sounds confusing, F minor seven, but really what it is is it's taking the same voicing of your D minor with the seventh added and you're moving it up where the root note is no longer on a D, but it's on an F. So you're taking the shape of minor seven. It's D minor because the root is here and the rest of the chord uh, members line up. Well, we move it up to here. So it's fifth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret, sixth fret. And I'm alone. Now, Now what I'm doing here is I'm really taking the same shape as the G7. So we played it down here. Now we're playing it here. Okay, and I have to move this finger here to include that root note. So this is B flat seven. And then we move to this. E flat minor, excuse me, E flat major seven. All right, there's all different ways to play these chords. I hope that answers your question and gives a, a couple of options. When I'm alone with my fancy. So, these little changes in between these chord voicings can be a nice thing to put in to the song when there's a little bit of space, okay? Like, let's say there's a little bit of space. I'll be with you. A little bit of space. You don't have to do too much. Just change from this voicing 
Mm -hmm. So I'll be with you. It's a nice little uh, melodic chord embellishment. Any more? Cool, Uke Joe. Glad you're digging it. Ukulele Butterfly, glad you're here. Similar to Dream a Little Dream. Yes, similar chord progressions, Tommy, yeah. Um, Parker, glad you're here. Thank you. I miss coming out to the West Coast in a big way. Hope to make it out there again someday. Um, all right, and more questions, anybody? Please ask. Um, you know, when we were working with these introductions, you can use these in a lot of different ways. <laughs> C, listen to the melody that's created by the chords. Let me back up one. So right here, I'm going to show, an, since no one's asking questions yet, I'm going to share a cool substitution for the G7, okay? Check it out. First chord, C. Second chord, C diminished seventh. Third chord, D minor seven. The last chord, we're going to bar like this. And then move to C. So what that is, is that is a substitution for G7. Instead of playing G7, we're playing a flat two chord. It's a tritone substitution. For those of you who want to understand the music theory of it, instead of the five, the G7, we're substituting a tritone away to C sharp, or really D flat, major seven. But who's, who's counting? progression because that note stays common the entire time. And if you want to relieve that tension, move to a C major 7 for your last chord. Now I don't have a graphic for this, but if you just follow along with my hands, two, three, I will answer your question, Loretta, you bet. Three, four. Could be a really sweet thing to add to the whole ending of the song. Give me what you alone can give a kiss to build a dream on. You know, it's a tasty little ending that you can put in, and some I put some uh, quarter note triplets. Da, 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 da. All right. So, Loretta, question. Can you show me F minor 6 as it appears in the very last line? Absolutely. So, is this the same Loretta who joined at the Ukulele Zen retreat at Omega last the year before last? I hope so. <laughs> if not, hello, Loretta. So, what you doing, you know, to play this chord? I'm just keep I'm playing my C with my pinky. And then I'm dropping the rest of the chord in here. Sounds a little different on a high G tuned ukulele because you don't have the low A flat in the bottom. It has a different effect, but it's cool because those notes overlap. So that's the technical end of it. I, I keep my pinky here and then I just drop the rest of the shape, which is right there on that song sheet available at the link down below. You can see it's the last chord, last chord over. All right. Now there are many ways to voice that. You could play your F minor six up here. In 
instead of down here. So we're kind of improvising this lesson now together as I take your questions, and I love doing this. You have C to F minor, 6, and then you have C to F minor, 6. The pinky is getting a good workout with all of these voicings. Remember the first thing I said, you know, job one is to keep this thing cool, your fretting hand cool. So break often, it's natural to want to like reach out, try to grab everything. Slow down, let it come to you. And that's another way to end on a C. So that in itself is an introduction, and I have a whole online course about introductions and outros. It's available at my website. You can see it there, stewfuchs.com, or just visit the link in the description down below. All right, a couple more questions before we sign off. Um, Divine Mother Wisdom is asking, any way to make the transition from C to D minor 7 easier? Yeah, I think similar to what we just did before, keeping the pinky in place and breaking often, you know? And can I share something on a more, say, personal note? Personal meaning like what I do to take care of my hands. Uh, look up contrast hydrotherapy online. I'll soak my hands in some very warm water, not boiling, I don't hurt my hands, don't hurt your hands. Three minutes of hot water, and then a minute of ice. Three minutes of hot, 30 seconds or a minute of ice. And I do three rounds of that, and, and then I do a, a gentle, you know, massage. I'm not really squeezing, just a lymphatic massage, allowing tension to drain, and you can look up the benefits of contrast hydrotherapy. I share this because many students, um, uh, myself included, have had, you know, pains and aches in your hands and your shoulder from sitting and, you know, jamming all day. It's natural that our muscles get stiff. And um, sometimes we're holding our breath when we're, uh, when we're playing. And even if we're not, it's just natural that things would, would build up. So this... You know, using, using some contrasting of hot, which br floods the area with, with blood. And then the cold creates vasoconstriction. So this is vasodilation with the hot water, the blood vessels open up. With the ice, there's vasoconstriction, and it helps to squeeze out the lactic acid, okay, that builds up and creates soreness, and it can reduce inflammation. Please don't take this as medical advice. I'm just sharing this with you. You might find it helpful. So look up contrast hydrotherapy online to learn more. And maybe it benefits your hands, okay? Of course, regular massage, stretching, yoga, exercise, these are all good things to do. And to, of course, to take some time every day to, to, to turn the mind off. It never really turns off, but what we can do is focus it one thing at a time. That's how I practice my chords. I know it's thrilling, right? Uh, but it actually is thrilling to feel yourself focusing on one thing, bringing the body and the mind together in the present moment, and the bridge that connects them is your awareness and your breathing. So the bridge is the breath between the body and the mind. So you can get a lot of benefit from just hanging with one chord progression in this mindful way. I'll share more about this in an episode uh, sometime soon. I try to keep these lessons as accessible as possible, of course, but, you know, this is called ukulele zen, not just for... Uh, you know, it's not just a name. I like to bridge the world of mindfulness practice with music. And you can do it in a very, very simple way, simply by playing one note, the 
listening very carefully to it. I've shared about this in some other videos on my channel, and I hope they not only benefit your music, but help to um, relax your whole learning process. Aloha, Gilbert. Got a couple more questions. Um, Leslie, those last two chords are not on what you downloaded. That's right, Leslie. I said uh, they're not... Uh, not written. That's the D flat major seven. So we're kind of not playing the song right now, but what we are doing is just getting into some of the ways that you can create an introduction or an outro. Yep, and I have a whole course on that at my website, stufuchs.com. Click on the store, and there is a whole course with uh, many different intros and outros many different styles i think you'll dig it um dave x5424 is asking online yesterday you had a tutorial that was fooling around in a maybe that was one of my recent ones the open a minor scale he suggested writing down the chords and then practice them i cannot find this tutorial hmm fooling around in a i'm not sure which tutorial maybe you could uh message me at my website and send me uh, send me uh, the name of it. But what I was probably doing was something similar to what I was just showing, where we take a scale. And really just listen carefully. just showing. Each note I'm playing, I'm listening very, very carefully to it, and the rest of the world just dissolves, and all, as I'm just immersed in the sound. All right? It takes some training, and that's why I'm trying to model that kind of training in these live stream lessons when I show you how to just play one thing. You're strengthening your ability to just do one thing at a time. And then when I go to play, that's really what I'm doing. It sounds like there's a lot of things happening at once, but really to me, um, it's just one event at a time. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to play Nocturne number nine. I would like to. You mean the, the famous Chopin Nocturne? Those are beautiful. I used to play some Barrios on my guitar, though. Let's play the song one more time before we go. Give me a jam before you leave me. Let's put it all together, okay? I can't show every graphic at once, but just remember that this is available for you at a link down below. If you enjoyed this video, please, if you enjoyed your time, give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. I hope you enjoyed the laid back uh, nature of this lesson and this tutorial. You can get this as well for free at a link down below. If you enjoy my content and you would like to support, there are a uh, couple of different membership tiers beginning at just two bucks a month. And if you pledge for an entire year, it's like 13% off. So it's even cheaper. You get all kinds of benefits and perks, uh, including song sheets, bonus lessons, jam tracks, all kinds of stuff. You can ask me questions directly, message me through the platform, Patreon. There are links down below if you're interested in joining and the, the, the highest tier of membership, you get a monthly jazz tutorial and it's an in-depth lesson with, with um, well-constructed, if I say so myself, well-constructed tablatures and easy to follow arrangements, but I offer a lot of clear suggestions on how you can expand upon them. Have a good time. Thanks so much for joining me. Please click that like, like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's jam. Let's start with that intro. Here we go. Oh, 
a kiss to build a dream on and my imagination will thrive upon that kiss sweetheart i ask no more than this oh a kiss to build a dream on give me a kiss before you leave me and my imagination will feed my hungry heart you leave me one thing before we part oh a kiss to build a dream on when i'm alone with my fancies i'll be with you Can believe they're true. Give me your lips for just a moment, and my imagination will make that moment live. Give me what you alone can give a kiss to build a dream on. Thanks so much for joining me and for um, showing up for your music today. Really appreciate you joining. Check the links down below to get the song sheets and uh, the chord introduction. Wishing you and your family all the best. So I've had a great time today with you all. Really nice to see some folks. Oh, uh, on a regular basis, I missed a question from Fred Davis. Are you still out there, Fred? Do I do hydrotherapy before or after playing? No, uh, Fred, I won't do it with my playing. What I'll do is maybe at the end of the day, if I've really played or strained myself in some way, then I will do it. And I'll fill up, you know, a, a pot of water, just enough to get my, my hand and my wrist in. Okay, remember, not too hot, but hot, not too hot. And then I fill up a sink with ice and water. <laughs> So ice water, not just ice, you need the water. Okay, and uh, it can be a nice way to, to, to end the day too, put on some relaxing music and do some hydrotherapy and then um, read a book and go to bed. So, uh, hey, thanks so much for joining me. David, thanks for that um, sweet endorsement of my chord solo tier. There are links down below. Wishing you and your families all the best, good health, many blessings, and thanks for making music with me. Take good care until we meet again.